What is up, guys? This is We Love Gaming. Today we're reacting to the controls. Game Theory FNAF 2 Gaming Scariest Secret. But game gaming scariest stories solved. Again, this me reacting to these older FNAF videos, even though I've already seen them, is mainly for nostalgia purposes. And that's really all I'm gonna say about it. So if you want why am I even saying if you want to see it? Whatever. If you want to see more of them, then subscribe to be able to see more of them. Like if you want, like to let me know if you want me to react to more of these and upload them maybe sooner. I don't know. Whatever. Let's just get into the video. Uh, hello? Hello, hello? Oh, hello, and welcome to the new and improved Five Nights at Freddy's 2 video. Um, I'm here to answer any questions the game may have left unanswered. The game's developer, he's, uh, he's a pretty tricky guy. <clears throat> Don't worry, though. I'll get everything cleared up. Oh, and, uh, watch out for the puppet. <laughs> Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that promises not to include any more gratuitous jump scares, unless that's just what I want you to think so I can lull you into a false sense of security and scare you again. But I wouldn't do that. I'll just let the uncertainty of whether a jump scare is going to happen or not drive you insane for the rest of this episode. <laughs> Man, I love reverse psychology. You know what else I love? These games! Not because I'm freaked out by the rosy-cheeked, tingle-looking, emotionally dead animatronics. Okay, well, Balloon Kid is pretty messed up, but whatever. No, what I appreciate about these games is the level of thought that went into every element of the story. When you create a game that has people rage-debating about whether it's a sequel or a prequel, you've definitely done something right. Unless that was never your intent, in which case you've done something horribly, horribly that. wrong. Anyway, the point is- I remember people arguing with it was a prequel or a sequel. And honestly, just from looking at, like, the trailers, you would think it is a, a sequel. Is five nights- But, now we know it is a prequel. At Freddy's 2 looks to be everything you'd want in a sequel. More cameras, more danger, and more fan. Oh, the fan. But that also comes... Oh, I remember that. The fan was a running gag for... Uh, I was about to say Markiplier. Matt Pat. Like, he hated the fan. That was his thing when he made these videos. ...with more questions. Questions about the game's lore. And while others will provide you with the jump scares, I provide you with what everyone really wants, answers. Well, maybe not everyone. What- Jeez. <laughs> that is a you. That is ten... Ten mil. Yes. No? Yeah. An elite, okay, educated subset of you really want answers. So grab yourselves a slice of Freddy Fazbear's signature pizza, because we're about to dig in. Ugh. Tastes like cardboard. cardboard. Let's get the big one yeah. out of the way first. Is the game a sequel or a prequel sequel? And what I mean by that is, contrary to popular belief, just because it has a big two slap next to the name doesn't automatically mean the game comes after the first one in a timeline sense. It's a sequel, yes, but it tells a prequel story. Take, for instance, these all-time classics, Psycho 4, The Beginning, Lion King 1 and a half, and the actual all-time classic, Godfather Part 2. All of them sequels that just so happen happen to also be prequels. It's not mm. mutually exclusive. So where is Five Nights at Freddy's 2 fit in? Knowing its place in the timeline is crucial for understanding its story. Well, to figure that out, let's focus on the paycheck you receive at the end of your fifth night. The date places the events of the game in 1987, a whole six years ahead of when we determined the first game took place in our first video. Sounds like a prequel, but we found that date in the first game by calculating Mike Schmidt's hourly pay and comparing that to the minimum wage of the 90s. If Scott Coffin, the 
game's developer is just picking random numbers for the payments, this bit of evidence would be meaningless. Except that he's not. At the end of Five Nights 2, you get paid $100.50. Divide that by the 30 hours worked and you get $3.35 an hour. The exact minimum wage for 1987. Which means that us using minimum wage calculations to identify the year of Five Nights 1 is a perfectly valid way to prove it and shows that it takes place after the events of Five Nights 2. Still don't believe me? Players brave enough to survive the extra night 6 are rewarded with a bonus check yeah. and a newspaper clipping that says the toy robots are getting scrapped and that the old ones are going into storage for a new, smaller scale version of the restaurant. That would explain why the old models reappear in Five Nights 1 and the toy models don't. And notice how it mentions a smaller version of the restaurant. The building in Five Nights 1 is significantly smaller than the setting of Five Nights 2. Yeah. Need more? I, I don't understand, like, the construction, like, this choice is the design choices of the building. Because you have the main party room here. The, not, not party room, but you have the main room here. Again, there's no door, front door camera. So we can only assume that it's, like, right here. With this being the stage, this being the main party room. And, or opening area, this being the prize corner, and then this hallway leads to the bathrooms, the parts and service, and then four party rooms, two of which have a ventilation shaft that leads to the security room at the end of the hall. Also, why wouldn't, wouldn't you, why would you make it so that a security room would be visible to everyone? Why? Doesn't make sense, but whatever. For evidence, what about- Look at me talking, <laughs> talking about something that came out five, like what, five years ago? No, not five years ago. Uh, huh, let me see. When did this video come out? About five years ago. Yeah, five years ago. What about the fact that on the first night in the office, the phone guy explains that the robots used to walk around during the day just like they do in Five Nights 2, but not anymore. Or the fact that phone guy dies in the first game, making yeah. it hard for him to also be the phone guy in Five Nights at Freddy's 2 if it takes place after. Call me the Phantom Menace, cause every way to Sunday, this game is a prequel. So with that revelation out of the way, we're able to piece together the rest of the timeline and dig a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna comment a lot on these videos now that the, I got the first one done because the first one kind of made me feel sad when they, they talked about the real life string of murders. But I love how Matt Pat thinks like he says this. Prequel. So with that revelation out of the way, we're able to piece together the rest of the timeline. Piece together the rest of the timeline. The rest of it. He's nowhere close. He's not even close at the very end of his videos so far that he's made for it. Like, this is 1%, let's say. This, let's, let's say this is 1%, and he's saying he's almost done. We had no idea what kind of rabbit hole we were going down. <sighs> And then dig a little game. bit deeper. Posters everywhere in Five Nights 2 welcome you to this new location, implying that there was another Freddy Fazbear's Pizza somewhere before this one. And Additionally, the one phone guy makes reference to it on night one, mentioning the old location and how it was left to rot. And before that was Fred Bear's Family Diner. So we know that there was one Freddy Fazbear's Pizza for the first game, one for the second game, and one that came before both of them that we've never seen. But even before that, the phone guy also mentioned an even older restaurant called Fred Bear's Family Diner, which, aside from its confusingly different name, also had different owners. So let me recap. There's the restaurant from the first game, which is the last in the timeline. The one that you're currently working at in 1987 in Five Nights 2, an older location of Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria left to rot, and the original Fred Bear's Diner. Jeez, I hope you're still with me because this is more complicated than the Zelda timeline. Are you sure about that? And the worst part is in later videos in like uh, maybe like somewhere within five to six, like somewhere five, six videos um, for Finance Freddy's that you did a while ago. 
that he's been making, if you count backwards from now, he talks about how we knew that there was another location and this was being that location. So knowing what you know then and then reacting to this now, you have a different perspective completely. And it, it's just amazing. Anyway, it's at this first location, the diner, where the whole story begins. Gravity Submitted falls. for the approval of the game. Wait a minute. First location, the diner, where... How did I... How did I not notice that's Gravity Falls? Granted, when, found it, when this video came out, I did not watch Gravity Falls, so... Probably was... Was it even out then? I don't think so, but whatever. Where the whole story begins, submitted for the approval of the Game Theorist Society, this is the true tale of Five Nights at Freddy's. When you die in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, before you've even gotten over the jump scare, you sometimes get a screen like this. Oh, turn it off! Turn it off! It's too horrifying! That, youngsters, was E.T. for the Atari, a console that came out before the NES. Yes, around the same time as the dinosaurs. It's widely considered to be the worst game of all time, hence me reacting in a horrified manner. See? Painful. Humor, folks. But seriously, you get these disturbing death minigames which, true to the 1987 setting, use Atari-esque graphics to depict various horrific events. All the while, a creepy robotic voice spells out letter by letter things like help them, save them, or save him. These death minigames are the most important piece in figuring out the true story behind these games. Let's start with this one. This death minigame has you playing as Freddy, taking cake to screaming children at a birthday party. As Freddy rushes around trying to keep the whole party happy, a single sad child looks on from outside. When suddenly you're powerless to do anything but look on in abject horror as a purple man pulls up in a car, murders the child, and drives off. It's my belief, loyal theorists, that this game takes place at Fred Bear's Diner and is chronologically the first event that we see in this timeline. How do I know? Well, it's a small establishment and there's only one. in a great big world. <laughs> The story of a pair of lungs that smoked as a team. We want animatronic, Freddy, as opposed to all the other games which show other robots. But more importantly, this murdered child is the one that sets everything into motion. One of the new tasks added Stop to it. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is winding a mysterious music box. I hated that. I hated that so much. I hated the fact that if you stay on the cameras too long, Foxy gets you because you didn't shine the light. I hated that so much. That we're told placates one of the animatronics. If you fail to wind the music box, what you're introduced to is this terrifying thing. The puppet. It looks like no face from Spirited Away. You know what else he looks like? Take a look at that murdered child again. See how his tear tracks remain visible on his face, even after he's dead? If we assume that they'll continue to stay with him into the afterlife, we can make a pretty good case that this kid's murder spirit eventually found its way into the puppet animatronic. But that's not all. What jump scare happens after this save him minigame? After seeing this tear-stained child's murder reenacted in 8-bit? The puppet. The puppet jumps out of the screen and attacks you. Coincidence? I don't think so. That incident marks the first time the chain is ever associated with a violent act carried out against a child. And we can infer that it was this incident that caused the original owners of Fred Bear's Diner to sell off to the company company now known as Fazbear Entertainment. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was senselessly murdered and left to haunt a crappy pizza place for the rest of my life in the body of an awful looking clown doll, I'd want to get my revenge as soon as possible. Unfortunately for our vengeful puppet though, it doesn't quite turn out that way. Fast forward a few years to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, the first location, the one that has yet to appear in a game. This new restaurant is the one we learned about in my earlier episode and- What is the game that Scott's going to release? Security Breach? Originally going to be called Into Madness. But I think it's Security Breach now. That's what MatPat thinks this is going to be, which... Maybe. And throughout the first game, where our pal the murderer uses a golden Freddy suit to lure away and kill five well, yeah. children in the back room. Well, yeah, As we read through the various articles on the wall, he gets caught the next day, but the bodies are never found. Presumably because they've been stuffed into the animatronic suits. The restaurant stays open for a few months until the dead body stink starts to waft off the robots and causes the place to get shut down for health reasons. But how do we know this happened in the first pizzeria's location? Again, we turn to what the phone guy says. 
on night two of Five Nights 2, he mentions the smell coming from the old animatronics, the smell that got the original restaurant shut down. We also know that after the Golden Freddy incident, it took multiple months for the restaurant to get shut down. That couldn't have happened in the restaurant of Five Nights at Freddy's 2, which is shut down on night six and into the foreseeable future. But outside of these lore clues, it also makes logical sense. Before the Golden Freddy murders, there was one dead child whose tear-stained soul existed in the form of the puppet. But now, there are five more dead children, and thanks to another of the death minigames, we find out exactly what happened to them. In the Help Them minigame, the puppet stuffs the dead children into the robotic suits, giving their souls new life, and preps them for their eternal mission of vengeance. But, but Matt Pat, you say through your chattering teeth, there are only four dead children in that game, Three, to which I tell you, look closer <laughs> if you dare, for the, the frame right before like Golden frame. Freddy's head jumps out and attacks, features the lost fifth dead child, and what started as a haunted puppet has suddenly become an army of possessed animatronics out for revenge. But wait, that's not all we know. We also know the murder was committed by the same guy who killed the first child. How? Look at the Foxy death minigame. Twice, Foxy runs out to meet the kids, but the third time we see the tall purple man again, smiling. Foxy goes into the other room to find five dead children. The man in purple strikes again. Skip ahead to 1987, finally bringing us to the events of Five Nights at Freddy's 2. The old animatronics have been retired, and the cute new versions of all our favorite friends come equipped with facial recognition software that just so happens to be connected to a sex offender database. Seems like an oddly specific detail, right? Until you consider that the last restaurant was closed for having children get kidnapped and killed by an employee, it's a safety measure. You see how it all ties together? So you have some animatronics possessed by vengeful spirits and another batch on the prowl for predators, but that doesn't stop our friend the Purple Man from continuing his life's work of murdering children at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. As we learn from the phone guy on nights four through six, the new restaurant is once again under investigation as, well, I'll let him explain. Oh, oh. What on earth are you doing there? Uh, didn't you get the memo? Uh, the place is closed. Wait a minute, aren't these supposed to be recorded? Wait, these are... In the third game, we find out that he recorded them. So, are, are these supposed to be recorded or not? I would assume this wasn't recorded because it's a prequel, but... That's... Uh, whatever. Move down, at least for a while. Someone used one of the suits. We had a spare in the back, a yellow one. Someone used it. Spring trap. Now none of them are acting right. The Golden Freddy Killer struck again. The final death minigame also supports this. You, as Freddy, must walk through an exact replica of the building. Animatronics all in their proper places, seeing the five dead children spread out through the various rooms. And based on what Phone Guy says, it seems like the guilty party was the former night guard, the one who moved to day shift and the one your character replaced. I mean, Phone Guy makes plenty of uncomfortable references to suddenly having an available position during the day. Um, when we get it all sorted out, we may move you to the day shift. The position just became available. Uh, we don't have a replacement for your shift yet, but we're working on it. But is the Purple Man really someone we've never met, and who's only worked there a week? Or is it someone we trust? Someone with a long history with these characters? Someone no one would suspect? The head guard. The one forced to fill empty positions and teach new recruits by leaving them instructions over the phone. Is the Purple Man the phone guy? Ask yourself this, what do we really know about Phone Guy? Let's look nah. at what he says. First, he always speaks like an outsider Nothing. looking in. He refers to the management of the company as they. So he's not a higher up like the CEO or even a manager. But he's also not a typical day worker as he says things like the employees and the staff. So he works there, but isn't generally considered a regular member of the company. We also know that he's qualified to take the role of a night guard. As we learn, he plans to take over the position sometime after night six and is on his way out of the position by the time the first game starts. For now, just make it through the night. Uh, when the place eventually opens again, I'll probably take a night shift myself. Um, I actually worked in that office before you. I'm 
finishing up my last week now, as a matter of fact. What else do we know? Well, we know that Phone Guy has a long history with the company, being with it at least since the first pizzeria that we haven't played in. He also openly admits that Foxy the Pirate was always his favorite, and that he has never liked the puppet because, as he says, it was always thinking. Yeah, I told you wouldn't have any problems. Did, uh, Foxy ever appear in the hallway? Probably not. I was just curious. Like I said, he was always my favorite. I'll be honest, I never liked that puppet thing. It's always thinking, and it can go anywhere. Okay, but what do we know about the purple guy? The gold. Then that's a terrible design flaw for it to go anywhere. <laughs> Like, honestly, why would you allow it to go anywhere? Have restrictions on these things. Golden Freddy Killer. Well, let's look at the minigames again. He has a long history with the franchise, killing since it was Fred Bear Diner. We see him smiling as he watches Foxy perform, Phone Guy's favorite, right before Foxy sees the room of dead children. We know There's that no the puppet doors. and the killer wouldn't get along, which would explain Phone Guy's discomfort around a creature that he describes as always thinking. And here's the bombshell. We know the killer is a security guard. How? On very rare occasions during the Save Them minigame, while Freddy chases the puppet, the purple man appears and chases you. Look on his chest. It's an orange badge, the kind that would be given to a security guard. Now look at his eyes. Orange Notice officer. the white spots. An odd, seemingly innocuous detail. But now look at Golden Freddy. Look deep into his dead, vacant eyes. What do you see? Two white spots. Pinpricks, really. Barely visible. They're there. And now finally, what do we see in Purple Guy's hand? Well, the Atari graphics make it tough to discern. It's not like any gun or knife I've seen. No, that to me... I can't say those words. I'm trying to get us arrested? It's very clearly a phone. The robotic voice is spelling out for you, save them, save them. But when Purple Guy, Phone Guy, catches you, the screen crashes and all you're left with is you can't. Yeah. But that's not where it ends, Internet. As you and I both know, there's still Five Nights at Freddy's 1. If this game is last in line and the puppet is truly pulling the strings last. behind all of this, you might be asking yourself where he is in Five Nights 1. We know the other animatronics got scrapped, but this ghostly guy should still be around if this timeline I proposed is correct. And get this, the puppet is in the first game. Take a look at the East Hallway. Seems pretty normal, right? But every so often, the posters on the walls change to this. A crying child with two streaming lines down his face. Look familiar? It should. The Five Nights at Freddy's series is about vengeance. One child, six children, more looking for revenge against a sick child killer. The purple guy, the guy who just so happens to be the first voice you hear when turning on these games. Save them, save them. You can't. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Make sure you wind that music box by clicking the subscribe button. I I cannot believe I forgot how good these videos were. Honestly. Like it feels so good to see these videos again after all these years. I'm gonna be honest, I'm like I really hope you guys enjoy it as much as I am. So why did I click J? Whatever. So I I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know I did. See you guys in the next one.